We're supposed to find lines that are tangent and normal to the curve at the given point. So if we need a tangent line, we need to find the derivative and then plug in the point. So we need to take a derivative of this whole thing with respect to x. So this first term we've probably seen before at this point with implicit differentiation. We need the product rule. So the derivative of the first term times the second term kept the same. Plus the first term kept the same times the derivative of the second term. And we're taking a derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. Okay, so luckily this one doesn't need the product rule. I will need the chain rule though, okay? Look, the pi is just a plain old number, right? So it sticks around when it's multiplying to something. Like when you take a derivative of 2x, your derivative is 2, right? If the, if the constant's by itself, then the derivative is 0. But if the constant's attached to a variable, then it stays around. And now here's the chain rule. Derivative of the outermost function is negative sine. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the innermost function. The derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. And then the derivative of pi is just 0. Okay, so we've taken a derivative of everything. Now we need to try to get y prime by itself. So I can subtract 2y from both sides because that term doesn't have y prime. So I get 2xy prime. And then look, it's plus pi times a negative, so I'm going to change this to minus pi sine y times y prime. Okay, now the left side has only terms that involve y prime. So I can factor out a y prime from both of these. And then the goal is to get y prime by itself. So I can divide 2x minus pi sine y from both sides. And now we've got y prime by itself. Okay, so we're ready for the next step. Okay, now we have an equation to help us find those tangent slopes. Uh, we need to find the tangent slope by plugging in 1 in for x and pi over 2 in for y. So the derivative is equal to pi over 2 for y, so that's negative 2 times pi over 2, so that's just going to make negative pi in the numerator. In the denominator, that's 2 times 1, because we're plugging in 1 in for x. And this is pi times sine of pi over 2. Okay, and so to figure out what sine of pi over 2 is without a calculator, remember anything that goes inside the parentheses of a trig function, those are the angles. That's the angle measurement. Okay, and pi over 2 is 90 degrees, you could think of it. it. You don't have to necessarily if you're comfortable with radians, but if you ever want to convert from radians to degrees, cut the pi out and then multiply the result uh, by, one, uh, by 180. Right? If I cut the pi out of there, then I've got one half left over. I multiply that result by 180. So that's 90. So this is the same thing as sine of 90. Okay, so now that we know what angle we're working with, let's go draw that angle in the unit circle like we do for all trig problems. Okay, 90 degrees rotates from the initial side here to the terminal side. And we always draw these in the unit circles. So that means that this distance is 1, right? So this coordinate is... Uh, sorry, this point is 0, 1. 0 on the x, 1 on the y. And now once you've drawn your angle and you've found your point, uh, cosine is always the x-coordinate of that angle. So this would be cosine of pi over 2. Sine is always the y-coordinate. So this is sine of pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2 we just found out is 1. So we got negative pi over 2 minus pi times 1. Okay, So that's my derivative. Okay, I changed up the problem from the textbook. I hope it's a little easier because that's kind of ugly. Um, what is this? 23. Yeah, it'll be nicer in the textbook because that's the slope. Okay, so to find out my equation of my tangent line, I now know what the tangent slope is. 
I have to multiply that whole thing to x, though. And then I have to find out what b is by plugging in these points, 1 in for x, pi over 2 in for y. So I'm plugging pi over 2 in for y. one in for x. And now I've got to solve for b. Once you've done that, you can plug it back in, then you've got your tangent equation. So I've got to add that negative term to turn it into nothing. I'm going to add pi over 2 minus pi to both sides. Add pi over 2 minus pi to both sides. Um, I think for your question, it's just going to be like pi over 2, a way easier fraction. Here, let's just let's pretend for a second, okay? because I, I, I made up a problem. Let's say that our slope isn't uh, all this crazy stuff. Let's say the slope actually uh, turned out to be negative pi over 2. Okay, you'd still do the same thing. You'd plug in 1 in for x, pi over 2 in for y, and then you'd try to get pi over 2 by itself, so you'd add pi over 2 to both sides. I mean, sorry, you're trying to get b by itself, so you add pi over 2 to both sides. So half a pi plus half a pi makes a whole pi. So that would be our y-intercept, and that's what you plug in here, okay? And then for the second part, for something normal to the curve, that means perpendicular to the curve, okay? So if this was your tangent slope, this is going to be your normal slope. Look, I change the sign, and I flip the fraction. And there we go. Now you've got something... Uh, to help you find the normal line. You just need to plug in 1 in for x again and pi over 2 in for y again.